Hey, Phantom Maniacs, welcome to the newest unboxing here on the Needless Things YouTube channel. This interruption of your spooky programming is brought to you by Audible Interlude, a G.I. Joe podcast available every single Friday, wherever you get your podcasts. Audible Interlude, bringing you G.I. Joe fun always. I don't know. That's not a thing. I don't know why I said that. Uh, we're taking a look at Stalker, Sergeant Stalker, that is. Uh, from the G.I. Joe Classified series, he is in the wave with the Paoli twins, and you can see that review uh, from a couple of days ago. Uh, thank you for checking that out. Thank you for liking, subscribing, and sharing. It's very important to what we do here. Uh, so, Stalker is one of my favorite Joes. Not only was his original figure this great uh, camouflage design here that just made him stand out from the other original. Now, this is not the original, original Stalker. I've got a straight arm version packed away. This is the swivel arm version that came out later. Uh, but his camouflage, I when you don't even understand in 1982 how cool camouflage was. Like, we loved the military when I was a kid. That's why G one of the reasons why G.I. Joe became so big. Uh, hmm, Stalker is a little dusty. Sorry, fella. Uh, but he also has that mustache giving him a little bit of a Lando look, which was very, very cool. Uh, I just, I, I love him as a character. I love this original figure. Uh, there are other stalker figures through the years that are great. He's just awesome. And if you haven't read the original Marvel comics, uh, then maybe you don't know how cool stalker is, but he's one of my favorite Joes. And now finally we have him in the classified series and I'm very excited to open this guy up and check him out. So uh, we've got great box art. I love the stylization of this art. Looks absolutely fantastic. And it looks like we might have Arbco Brothers Circus in the background here. I haven't quite been able to tell what's going on back there. I think that's a possibility. Uh, back of the box, we've got that new box art in lieu of a cross sell. Uh, well, I mean, it kind of is a cross-sell, I guess, except for the fact that none of these vehicles actually exist in the line. And I'm looking right now. There's no... Oh, wait. Okay, here's the RAM. So the RAM is on here. Uh, the coil is not on here that I can see, which is fine, because I don't think anybody really cares about that anymore. Uh, but yeah, none of these vehicles have made it into the line. and I. Don't know that I. They don't even have a hiss on here. Although it seems like mostly Joe vehicles on the ground, and I do appreciate the havoc being back over there. Uh, and Cobra vehicles. Well, that's it. That's kind of all Cobra gets is right over there at the top. Very weird, but uh, still, you know, cool looking. Let's open it up. That's enough. That's enough looking at the packaging. That well, I guess some people care. Those mint and box collectors care a lot about the packaging like a lot a lot the conversations online you guys whoo i am happy to be an opener to where i don't really have to care although i have i think i've told you guys this before i have been saving these boxes because they are very nice all right look at all of the gear this guy has uh they really loaded stalker out with a ton of stuff. I'm, I'm impressed. And you know what? I'm also, I didn't mention this in the uh, Tomax and Samot review. Uh, the tape that they use is very nice. It, it has a high quality adhesion, so it does not stick to the accessories, but it does stay in place very nicely. I, I'm impressed with that because I'm not generally a fan of having tape uh, making direct contact with my toys because of that possibility of leaving uh, stickiness and I hate stickiness. We actually, on a little aside, while I'm getting his multitude of accessories out here, this guy really does come with a ton of stuff. Uh, on a little aside, the the family and I went out running around doing some Halloween shopping today, and ended up eating at IHOP, which is not one of my favorite places because they only serve Pepsi products, and that is repulsive. Um, the way I, by the time we were seated, I'm usually better mannered than this, but we had had some ordeals. Uh, so by the time we were seated and the wait waitress asked me what I wanted to drink, I said Diet Coke. 
And she said, well, we've only got that at Pepsi. I actually went, oh, and I don't normally do that. I'm not that guy, but, but we've been through some stuff today. Uh, and then after she walked away, I promptly put my elbow into some syrup that I did not notice that was on the table, which is horrible. And the reason I told you that story is I hate stickiness. I cannot abide things that are sticky. Uh, all right. So we're, we're 27 minutes into this review now, and I have yet to say anything about this figure. Let's get all of the Look at, look at this loadout. Look at all of the stuff that he came with. This is very nice. I'm very impressed. But let's sweep all that to the side and take a look at Stalker himself. Now, we'll get I know I showed you guys the figure earlier. We'll take one more look. We'll get my big thumb out of the way. One more look at the figure so we can see what we're playing with here. Uh, the first thing that jumps out at me is I would like his greens to be a little brighter. However, I do think he looks great. In hand, his camo pattern stands out a lot more than it does in online pictures and videos that I've seen. Uh, and if you'll notice, it's it's on his back. It's on his uh, crotch piece. Uh, the, yeah, it's even up on his thighs here. So they have applied that camo deco everywhere that it needs to go. It's on the shoulders. Uh, he looks really, really good in person. Now, yes, he's still a little drab compared to what I might have wanted, but he looks better in person than he does in images and videos I've seen online. But, you know, we could absolutely get a retro carded version if that line ends up continuing that has these brighter colors. And to be honest, I don't know this scale and this style if that would look better. Uh, but I'd probably buy it anyway. Well, we know the gung ho looked better. So there you go. Uh, I've got the butterfly joint shoulders. You guys have seen the articulation on these figures by now. We've got a, a fantastic bicep swivel right here. Uh, well, okay, so when you turn it to its most dramatic angle, you do have you do see the cut there, but I mean that's it's nothing. It's barely even noticeable. Uh, double jointed elbows. All of this, all of this new sculpt stuff uh, that they're using on the retro carded snake eyes, the commando snake eyes that's coming out. Um, Really, really nice, much more basic design than some of the others, and yet full of detail and textures. I mean, look at the trousers. He's got the knee pads. Uh, he's got the seams and all the different just sculpted detail that makes these figures, uh, even when they are so-called upscaled versions of the originals, makes these figures so worth having and, and so interesting to the eye, so toyetic. Uh, he's got his web gear that is essentially the same design. Uh, the grenade is a little bit different. He's got a more modern uh, canister grenade as opposed to the old fragmentation grenade that's on the other figure. He's got his... Uh, he does have the knife, but it's not removable. I, I'm i torn on that because sometimes the removable... Like if you look at the, the Cobra Trooper figures with their knives that like stick that far up next to their heads. It's not the best look in the world, but to have a non removable knife seems a little weird to me too. So I, we, if we could find a happy medium there, that would be great. Uh, but it is well detailed. It looks good. Uh, nice looking web gear. And it does have, you can see the painted detail on that grenade and on the sheath. That's a nice touch. Uh, he's got the thigh holster that we'll get into in a minute once we actually start looking at his firearms. Uh, and then he's got another thigh holster for the knife that is removable. Uh, and those boots, look at those boots. Those are fantastic. Let's get these boots on you know, a lot of these new characters coming out. I, I don't mind the shin guards at all. But a nice pair of laced up boots just looks so cool. Uh, very, I'm a big, big fan of these. They look great. Uh, they are all one color. There's no extra deck. Gosh, look at those treads, the way that they sculpted the treads to kind of hang down. Fantastic. Great job. Uh, so he's very striking figure. We haven't even looked at his portrait which is, you know what this portrait says to me? This portrait says to me, Jason Voorhees. 
very reminiscent of Creighton Duke uh, from Friday the 13th, Part 8. Like, not dead on, but just reminds me. Uh, I like it. I don't need, I don't know that I needed him to look this old and gnarly, but man, there's a lot of character in that portrait. And look at this crazy scar they've got on his head here. That's not just like, that's not his part. That is a scar on this man's head. That fade looks incredible. Uh, this might be the best like black haircut. I've seen on an action figure and look Marvel with their MCU stuff has done some really nice work, but I mean, he is this, this is very well done. That fade is fantastic. And the mustache, the mustache looks great as well. I mean, this, this is one mean dude. You don't want to mess with. He looks great. Uh, so let's take a look at his gear. Now uh, he comes with that scarf that is a big popular thing in the military. I don't know if it's kind of like a towel, like Hitchhiker's Guide type thing. Like if you get your scarf, do you know how much you can do with a scarf? You can wipe your face. You can wipe your forehead. You can soak up water. and You can make a tent. I don't know. But this is definitely a thing in the modern military. I will not be putting it on the figure. I just don't care for the look of it. Uh, but I do think it's a cool accessory to throw in there. He has his beret. Uh, Noel will be thrilled to see a beret figure, another beret figure in the line. And look at that. Fits on perfectly, nice and snug. Well, okay, that was, I probably gave it a little more force there than is necessary, uh, but looks great. And the color, it is that darker green color that kind of matches the, the stripes on his camo. Uh, so it looks good there. Great, great fit. Uh, we have got a submachine gun with a magazine. Let's see here. I feel like this one goes. You can see there's a particular slot. It looks like it goes in that way. Here is one of the hazards of doing an unboxing rather than a prepared. There we go. Okay, so that is absolutely, look at that. An upscaled version of that original Stalker submachine gun. I love it. I think it looks great. I like the magazine and the, the detail that they put into that. This is a great piece. This is exciting. And you can see it's got, uh, for future blast effects, compatibility. Very cool. This is awesome, you guys. I'm very happy with that firearm. Matter of fact, he is the, my figure is absolutely going to be holding that. So let's go ahead and just slide that into his hand. Get the finger through the trigger guard, which works uh, perfectly in this line every single time. Man, that's nice. Uh, okay. Oh, and then we've got what else is going on here? Uh, we have a pistol with what looks like an extended clip, not removable, excuse me, magazine, uh, not removable, but it will go. Oh, this is the suppress. Whoa. Okay. This is the suppressor for this pistol. So that, let's see which way this goes. Whoa, that's like Robocop's gun. That is wild. And so we have storage for both of these pieces in that thigh holster. So the pistol slides right in there and that suppressor goes right in the front. And look at that, both pieces stored perfectly, ready for action. And then he has got another kind of rifle 
that I remember thinking this was going to be a shotgun. It, it is very clearly, obviously not a shotgun uh, because you have a different ammo supply for this one. So very interesting here. Uh, so that belt feeds into, so it has belted ammo that comes out of the cartridge. It feeds in here. I wouldn't have minded an empty belt coming through the other side, but that's still a very, very cool piece. I like that a lot. But what I'm wondering, oh my gosh, you guys, this is wild. Okay, so wait, how does that work? This is the holster for this rifle. And that seems about as far in as it goes. Doesn't it seem like it should go in further than that? But that's it. But then this... That doesn't seem right, does it? does it? No, that can't be right. What is happening here? I am obviously missing a piece of this puzzle. Maybe this is... Okay, maybe I'm doing this wrong. I think I am doing this wrong. This one... Aha! Okay. I just... I wanted this one to be stored, since this, to me, is Stalker's primary firearm. But that is not the case here. This one gets stored on the back with the magazine in this little part right here. So that's how that goes. And then that plugs into uh, just kind of an unusual storage system for, for a submachine gun to me. But there you go. That's how that goes. Uh, and then we have this bad boy, which is a very, very cool firearm for sure. That plugs in there and there. And so now we have this one. That I'm going to be honest, I don't know that I'm going to display him with this. So that goes there. And then finally, we've got just a really uh, basic but cool knife. You can see the edge sculpted in there. Looks great. That fits into the sheath right there. And that is Sergeant Stalker. That is Lonzo. Looking great. Uh, fantastic job on this guy. He's He is... This is the intersection of design and homage that I appreciate. I think they've done a, done a really nice job here. Uh, you guys, thank you for watching. Uh, please like, subscribe, share. Check out Audible Interlude, a G.I. Joe podcast. And uh, check back next week for more spooky toy reviews and another G.I. Joe review. Smash that like button if you like needless things.